In this next lecture, we're going to talk about function notation and substitutions. So let's start off with some uh, explicit examples. So let's say that we have a function f of x, and the, the rule is we're going to take x as our input, and the output will, will be 2x minus 5. And then we'll have a function g of x defined as x squared plus 3x plus 4. And so we want to evaluate functions. OK, so if we wanted to evaluate g at negative 2, all we have to do is take negative 2 and substitute that in for the x. So we're just going to take negative 2 and replace these x values with uh, negative 2. So we'll have negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2 plus 4. So we'll have uh, 4 minus 6 plus 4. So we'll have 8 minus 6, which is 2. Um, if we want to evaluate f at negative 4, then we're just going to come up here and um, replace the x with a negative 4. So this will be 2 times negative 4 minus 5. So that'll be negative 8 minus 5. So that'll be minus uh, 13. Now, supposing that a um, is something valid that we can substitute, then, then what we're just going to do is replace um, every instance that we see of an x with, with an a. So if I substitute a, then I'm just going to replace that 1x, and we'll have 2a minus 5. OK, so similarly, let's say that we want to substitute an expression like this. Say we want to substitute a plus 6. Well, we can still do that. Uh, so wherever we see this x, we're going to replace that with a plus 6. So this and so we'll just end up getting 2 times a plus 6 minus 5. And since we can simplify this a little bit, we should probably do that. So we can distribute this 2 in and we'll get 2a plus 12 minus 5. So then we'll get 2a and then um, uh, plus uh, 7. OK, so um, in this next example, let's say that g of x is 2x minus 1. And let's see what happens when we evaluate g at a plus 2. So similar to this last example we just did, we will take our a plus 2, and that will be like our x. OK, so wherever we see an x in this rule, we'll replace it with that input. So we're just going to replace this. We'll have 2 times a plus 2, right? a plus 2 uh, minus 1. And then we can simplify this, so we should. So we can distribute the 2. We'll have 2a plus 4, and then minus this minus 1 here. So then we end up with 2a plus 3. OK, so now let's suppose that we have functions defined uh, it, 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 as, a, as a set of ordered pairs. Right, so we have seen that we could we could we could do that. So let's say f is defined as these ordered pairs here, and g is defined as these ordered pairs. And um, you could quickly check that they are functions. Right, the domain would be one minus two, three, and pi, and each of those has um, uh, a single output. Right, it would be a problem if the first coordinate were to repeat, and that doesn't happen in either of these cases. So they are functions. Uh, find each of the following. So um, we're going to do what we did up above, but instead of having an algebraic rule, we're going to use the, the pairs here to evaluate them. So g of 1, this 1 here, uh, we need to find the pair in g with first coordinate first entry as 1, OK? And we have that right here. Right, This pair has a minus 2. This pair has like a, a 1 half. So that uh, that is supposed to represent our input. So we're trying to input 1, just like we did up above. And here is the pair that corresponds to the output, so uh, to that input. And that'll give us the output, right? 
And what is the output? Well, the output is right here. It's this 1, the second coordinate. So the answer is 1. Similarly, f of 3. So that is our input. So we have to find the pair that has that input. If, if no such pair exists, then we would just say that the function does not exist there. Okay, but there happens to be a pair where 3 is in the first coordinate, so that is a valid input. And then the output would be the second coordinate, which is a half. Similarly, f of pi. Pi does appear as the first coordinate of one of the pairs. Um, there should be a closed parenthesis there, but that's like a minor detail. So what is the output there? If we evaluate f at pi, the output will be 0. Right. So it's actually a little bit simpler when you're dealing with um, the ordered pairs. Um, OK, so here, here we're going to have to do a little bit more work. Let's say that we have f of negative 2 minus g of negative 2. So the, the way to proceed with this is first, let's just evaluate what each of these are separately, and then we'll do that difference. So what would f of negative 2 be? Well, we come up here, and we have negative 2 as an input. And so f of negative 2 is the output, which is 0, the second coordinate. And then we're going to subtract. What happens if we evaluate g at negative 2? So we come up here to g. Negative 2 is our input, and then the output is a 2. So we will replace that with a 2. And so now we will have 0 minus 2, and the answer is just negative 2. OK, in this next example, we're just getting a little bit more sophisticated, but very similar to what we just did. Now we have, again, algebraic descriptions for f and g, and we want to evaluate the following. So first, we're going to do f of negative 1, and then we're going to add it to g of negative 2. So the, the rule here is, well, let's just figure out what each of these are separately. So um, if it's easier, I could write it like this. So equals, so what would f of negative 1 be? Well, f is defined as follows. f of x is x squared minus 2x. So if our input is negative 1, then we're going to replace x with negative 1. So then we'll have negative 1 squared minus 2 x, right? And that's that's what the f of negative 1 is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I should have had negative 1 here. Negative 1. Right? No longer any x's. OK, what about g of negative 2? So come over here, and we're going to replace uh, the x with a negative 2. And what will we get there? So we'll have plus 5 times negative 2 minus 4. OK, and now we just have to simplify this. So we'll have negative 1 squared is a 1. And then minus 2 minus 1 is actually plus 2. And then over here, this will be a minus 10 and then a minus 4. So what do we get in the end? Uh, minus 14 plus 3, so negative 11. OK, and in this next example, OK, well, look at this carefully. So this is saying g evaluated at f evaluated at 3. So it's g evaluated at f of 3. So first what we're going to do is figure out what is f of 3 and then that should be our input for g. So first what is f of 3? So we'll just do we'll leave g alone for a second and we'll just simplify this inside part. So f of 3 what do what do we get for that? What is that? Well, you come up here and we're going to replace the x's with 3. So we'll have 3 squared minus 2 times 3. And I haven't done anything with g yet, so just carry g along. And now this will be 9 minus 6, so that'll be a 3. OK, so now we have to figure out what is g of 3. So now we come up to g, and we're going to replace the x with a 3. So this will be 5 times 3 minus 4, so 15 minus 4. So that'll be 11. OK. Right here, this is actually an example of what's called a composition. And uh, this will come up regularly. OK. So the, the way to deal with this is just simplify what's on the inside first, and then slowly work your way out to, um, to the other evaluations. Right. We don't know what f of 3 is yet, so I can't just substitute that in. Um, but an alternative way to do that, actually, so solution 2 for that problem, 
And I think it's a little bit more confusing, but um, some people prefer this way is you could actually do this. You could say f of 3 is your input, right? And so what I could just do is wherever I see these x's up here, I could replace those with f of 3's. So the alternative solution would be that g of f of 3 would be this. It would be 5 times um, f of 3, right? That's our input now. That input is f of 3. So that's our input, minus 4. And then at this point, you could simplify what f of 3 is. OK? Well, f of 3, we actually figured that out up here, right? You would replace this with a 3. So you'd have 5 times um, 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 3 is 6, minus 4. So this would be 5 times 3 minus 4, which is, again, 11. So it gets you the same solution. But uh, I think it's a little bit simpler in a lot of situations to simplify the inside and work your way uh, out. But that's just personal preference. You could use either method. That's perfectly fine. Uh, similarly, in this next example here, we're going to figure out what g of f of 1 is and then f of g of 1. OK, so first we're going to have g of f of 1. So Coming up here and replacing and evaluating f at 1, we're going to have 1 squared minus 2 times 1. So 1 squared minus 2 times 1. And then we're going to subtract f. And now we're going to evaluate what g of 1 is. So I'm evaluating the inside first and carrying along the outside. So g of 1 will be 5 times 1, which is 5, minus 4. OK, so simplifying this before we continue. So we'll have 1 minus 2 which is minus 1, minus f of 5 minus 4 is 1. And uh, then now we just have to evaluate these. So g of negative 1, you come up here and substitute negative 1, and we'll have 5 times negative 1 minus 4, and then minus. And here we should be a little bit careful because we're going to subtract something that probably is going to have many terms, right? So we should introduce parentheses here so we don't forget that that negative is actually going to be distributed. Okay, so just be careful. Unless you realize, oh, I could just evaluate f of negative 1 and then substitute it over here. That's another way to do it. So we, could have, we would have 1 squared minus 2 times 1, which we already actually evaluated up here as negative 1. But, okay, let's see what happens. So we have negative 5 minus 4, and then minus. And I'll just simplify that parenthesis so we don't even have to worry about distributing. But it's 1 minus 2, which we already did evaluate as negative 1. Okay, So now we have uh, minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9, but then plus 1. So this will actually be a minus 8. So in this last, yeah, the last little bit for this example, um, we are going to figure out what g of 3 is, and then we're going to square it. Okay, so the way to proceed here is let's leave the squaring alone. We know how to evaluate g of 3, so let's deal with that first. So g of 3, we're just going to put inside these brackets here. So g of 3, coming up here, it'll be 5 times 3 minus 4. So, whoop, looks like a 9 minus 4. So that'll be 15 minus 4, so that'll be 11, and then squared. So what's that, uh, 121? OK, now, um, so our last example is kind of similar to the ones that we were solving before. Here we have f of x is 3x squared, So, um, and we want to evaluate the following expressions. So here, our input is a minus 2. So wherever we see our, our input x, we're just going to replace that with a minus 2. Here, it's a little bit different. We're going we're gonna to have to be very careful because our input has multiple terms. So we are going to have to put parentheses here. So a minus 2, because we're going to have to square this input, right? So it makes sense that we're going to have to put parentheses there because it has multiple terms involved. Okay, so how do we how do we deal with this? Well, um, this is actually just doing the distributive property. Okay, so 
if we uh, uh, if we want to expand this, um, the way to do this would be a minus two, a minus two, and then we're going to use the distributive property. Um, so let's leave the okay. Well, we can bring the three in if we want. We can bring the three into this first term. Okay, and what do we have? We'll have three a uh, minus six, and then times a minus two. Now you have to be careful. Whenever you do something like this, you're not going to bring in the three into multiple terms. You see that this is a product. Okay, so if I want to combine these two, I'm only going to distribute into this. There's no reason to distribute into both of them, because if I did that, then that would only make sense if this coefficient was a nine, not a three. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, to distribute this term here, um, there's a couple of methods that you that you can use. If you've heard of FOIL, that's one method. But but uh, something we could do is we could take this entire factor here and distribute that into these two terms. So what would that look like? Well, we'll have 3a minus 6 times the a, and then um, and then uh, minus 2 times the 3a minus 6. OK? And now we're going to have to distribute that a in. So we'll distribute the a. And we'll distribute the, um, it's really a minus 2, right? OK, so what happens there? So we'll have 3a squared minus 6a. And then don't forget that negative. Okay, so negative 2 distributed will be negative 6a and then uh, plus 12. Okay, and we're almost done, except these two terms are uh, like terms in the sense that I can combine them because they both have this uh, common factor of a in them. And the only difference is, well, um, the coefficients, but these coefficients happen to be the same. But that, that that doesn't that actually part doesn't matter if even if those numbers were different, we could still combine them. So it would be three a squared, and we just combine coefficients, which would be minus twelve a, and then finally plus twelve. So that would be the expanded version of substituting um, a minus two into f. So this uh, this next example very similarly. Let's evaluate f at x plus 5. So we're going to take x plus 5 as our input and plug that in for x. So we will have 3 times x plus 5 squared. And again, we have to put these parentheses here because x plus 5 has multiple terms. And we have to square it. So um, let's do that. x plus 5, x plus 5. OK. If you don't distribute the 3 into the first factor, what you could do is distribute these two terms and then distribute the 3 at the end. That's another way to do this, but kind of continuing the strategy that we've had. 3x plus, you know, distributing the 3 into this first term here, 15, and then times x plus 5. So then what do we get? So distributing this in, right, so the th this term and this term, we will have x times 3x plus 15 plus 5 times 3x plus 15. So then distributing the x, distributing the 5, we're going to have 3x squared plus 15x in this first term here, and then plus 15x plus um, plus what? Uh, <clears throat> um, 30, 60, 75, right? 75. So 3x squared plus 30x plus 75. Now let's say that we want to substitute a plus b. Well, it looks slightly different because now we don't have numbers like we have a variable and sort of another variable but the strategy is still going to be the same you're always going to do this strategy no matter what is here you can 
put practically anything you want there, any expression, and then you can substitute that in for f. Because we're not figuring out whether or not f has a value at these things. It's just that's the way that this works. Okay, So we're kind of assuming here that a and b are going to be variables, and maybe you'll substitute those later. But as it stands, the strategy is if that's your input, then that's what you're going to replace x with. So this will be 3 times a plus b uh, quantity squared. So then we'll have 3 a plus b a plus b. You know what? Since we keep doing the same thing up above, let's do this one a little bit different. I'm going to save that 3, and then I'm going to figure out what, uh, what happens if I distribute this into these two. Okay, So I'm going to save that 3. Okay, we'll multiply that 3 in the end, but let's see what happens. So, um, And if if you want, try to do it the, the way that we just did in the previous two examples. Do that same thing, and you should get the exact same answer. So if I do a plus b times a, then I have a times a plus b, and then plus b times a plus b. So we'll have 3 times, and then these brackets will leave again until the end. This will be a squared plus ab plus ba plus b squared. Okay, now these look different, but multiplication is a commutative operation when we're talking about real numbers. So um, ab is the same as ba. Okay, so 3 times a squared plus 2 of these. So we have 2ab plus b squared. And then now we can distribute in that 3. So then this would be 3a squared plus 6ab plus 3b squared. All right, so you would have to distribute that 3 into these three terms because they're separated by addition. Right? And if you do the old strategy, the way that we did it up here, you would distribute the 3 first. So it would be 3a plus 3b. You will get the same exact answer in the end. OK, now another type of expression that shows up actually quite commonly in more advanced math courses is this one right here. So we actually want to evaluate a function at x plus h. But the strategy is still exactly the same. So um, the x, remember again, the rule is we're going to take x, and then we're going to do 3 times x squared. That's what the output is. So this will be x plus h squared. OK, so expanding this, so 3 times x plus h, x plus h, OK. Um, so what are we getting here? Um, now, another way to actually do this expansion is it, it's what's called FOIL, right? And that's just kind of a. It's just kind of a, 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 an acronym for, you know, first, outside, inside, last. Okay. Now we could do the same strategy that we did before. Okay. Either of the two that we followed before, but since we keep doing a very similar problem each time, might as well try something another method. You know. Um, and the way that this works is when we say first, what we mean is first, let's multiply the first two terms of this, right? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to distribute the x into the first term, and that'll give us an x squared. And then we will do outside, we'll distribute it in to the h. So we'll have plus xh. And then we'll do the inside. And uh, just to illustrate that, let me switch to another color here. So now the h gets distributed, and we get plus hx. And then the last term will be plus h squared. OK, so this is just an alternative way to expand. You'll probably get used to doing this procedure, just because it's a little bit faster than writing out the distributive property, all these extra steps here. And then. Do you see that this is really 3 times x squared plus these two are the same. So it's 2xh plus h squared. 
and then that will be 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared, distributing that 3 in. And that's exactly the same as what we would have gotten if we had, at this step, you know, um, here distributed in you know, the 3. So solution 2, I could just show you that real quick. Um, let's say that at this point, you went down here and did the following. So let's distribute in the 3. So we have 3x plus h times x plus h. And then now you distributed. So now it'll be x times this whole factor, 3x plus h, plus h times the 3x plus h. And now distributing this, we'll have 3x squared plus uh, xh plus 3xh um, plus h squared. There must have been a mistake here. Oh, OK, sorry. Way back here, I forgot to put the 3 in front of the 3h. So that's going to change this right here to a 3 and this to a 3. OK, so sorry about that. Let me, let me fix this real quick. So erasing this. OK, what are we going to have? So we'll have 3x squared plus uh, 3xh plus 3xh plus 3h squared. And then finally, that'll give us exactly what we had right here, which is 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. Okay, so either method, you know, a lot of times you have many different ways that you can do these expansions in several situations. So um, I would say pick whichever is the simplest for you to do, but also, um, you know, sometimes um, uh, it might be better to pick the quickest method if you'd like.